Have you ever wondered what your brand should be doing in-house versus outsourcing to an agency? If you have, then you might find this video quite useful because I'm gonna share with you what we typically see our clients doing in-house themselves and then what they send to us as their partner agency. Let's get into it. Okay, so look, so for over a decade now, I've been running Evergreen as an agency and we've been partnering with ambitious retail and e-commerce brands. And we see time and time again what these brands like to do in-house and then what they prefer to kind of outsource to Evergreen and have us as their partner uh, do for them because they lack the expertise or they lack the experience. And in this video, I'm going to share with you just seven of the things that we, seven characteristics that we typically see being done in-house and seven things that we typically see being done by an agency such as ourselves here at Evergreen. Right, let's get into it. I'm gonna start with the in-house stuff first. And you'll be able to run along with this and just kind of see which do you do you agree with, do you disagree with, what do you do in-house versus what is outsourcing to an agency, and you'll be able to take a step from this. But this is based on what we see within our current uh, portfolios. So here's the stuff that we see being done in-house. For the most part, it tends to be the creative side of the brands we work with. They tend to do a lot of that in-house. Now, it's not always, this is not a hard and fast rule. And for some of the clients, we absolutely do support them with some of their creative. But for the most part, if you're an established brand, you're probably gonna have your in-house creatives, your graphic designers, your creatives, they're gonna be doing the, the look and feel of your brand. They're gonna know the brand. And you're gonna want, from the brand side, you're gonna want complete autonomy control over that. You're gonna have a very clear identity of who you are and what it looks and feels like being in your brand. So we see a lot of the brands that we work with, they do most, if not all, of their creative in-house. It doesn't mean an agency can't provide ideas and suggestions. Of course, that's what we do, that's all, what a lot of agencies will do. But for the most part, your creative is kind of done in-house. Also, the same is true for the copy and the content. Now, again, an agency will have a lot of advice and ideas in terms of way to bring that copy and that content to life. But in boots on the ground, the writing of the content, be it product pages, category pages, website copy, I'm specifically sort of leaning this video towards a digital marketing context, but the same rules really apply for any kinds of, of marketing. But when it comes to writing content for, for your blog, for your, you know, any and, every, any and all parts of your website, for the most part, we find the majority of the clients that we work with, the brands that we work with, they are doing the bulk of the content in-house. We're just advising them on what and why and how, and I'll come on to that when we get to the agency section. So a lot of the content heavy lifting, as well as the creative, tends to sit on the brand side in-house. You've got a team there that are doing the creative and putting pen to paper. Also, things like all of the product updates, so the inventory of your products, the updating of your products. Maybe you need to add new products, remove products. All of that stuff to do with the inventory for your e-commerce store, that every single time for us is done in-house. We do not do, there's not a single client where we do the updating of the inventory and feeding that, that inventory into the CMS and then feeding that, you know, the CMS, connecting that into Google um, Merchant Center to run it through. That side typically is done on the, on the, um, the client side. And that is either done by an administrator, someone that's doing the admin side of it, and then on the more technical side where it connects it into Merchant Center for Google Ads, that tends to go from then over into a developer, which again, often is done in-house. So the product inventory, almost always in-house, and I think 100% of the time for us, it's always done in-house, we don't tend to do it. Email marketing, that's another big one. You know, that is all, we, we don't do it, we don't provide email marketing. I'm sure if we did here at Evergreen, then some of our clients would probably have us do it for them, but, our clients, um, and we find it's often better done in-house by the brands doing their own email, because frankly, a lot of our brands are sending out a lot of emails. They're segmenting the data, they've got different email sequences going out to different audiences at different times of the year for different promotions and different special offers and all of this good stuff. And we find that you're, as a brand, you're gonna want that control because you're gonna want to have a sequence, a marketing calendar, and you're gonna be wanting to go in that bang, bang, bang with different offers and so just having that control and the ability to react very, very quickly and adjust. We find email marketing for all of the brands that we work with, they do it themselves and they do it really, really well. And it's a powerful marketing channel. It still amazes me because when you compare, actually just to segue a second, but when you compare the amount of talk about SEO and paid and this and the other, and yet we see time and time again, that email is still such a hugely lucrative channel in terms of revenue, 
for all of our e-commerce brands. So if you're an e-commerce brand and you're watching this because you're wanting to know well, what should we outsource and what should we do, whether you are outsourcing your email marketing or not, if your email marketing is not a serious chunk of your revenue coming in per month, and I'm talking at least you know, 15, 20% upwards, um, and you don't want it to be too much, but it should be a decent chunk, then you, you're missing a trick because email for our clients is just so lucrative. It's, it's not something, um, this is, you know, we don't do it, but it's such a lucrative channel to get, to keep your brand top of mind, to get those customers coming back. It's so lucrative. And we see our brands doing it so, so well, and it just adds another string to their bow. It's very, very powerful. So that one's almost always done in-house, as is social media management. So, you know, a lot of this is obvious, but posting on socials, keeping your, your feeds updated, keeping your customers and your would-be customers engaged across your social media platforms, whatever platform you're on, that almost always is done in-house. It's not something we don't do social media management here at Evergreen, uh, never have. And we find that our brands, they'll have one person on the team or a couple of people or it's spread across the team, depending on the platforms, the media being used. But social media, very, very powerful, but is done in-house. You know, you can, brands, you know, do outsource it, social media agencies, of course. But for me, I've always found when you need to be reactive with social media, you just need to be quick off the mark. You want to post something. If you've got to go have the back and forth, it just slows everything down. And you want to be able to comment. You want to be able to engage that audience. You know, social media is a two-way thing. You shouldn't just be posting. You've got to engage and get the conversation flowing, you know, and all of that good stuff. And I think that is just so much easier to do in-house. So in-house social media, absolutely must, as is special offers. You know, special offers, any kind of incentives, promotions. Are, we've, we've got so many different e-commerce e retail brands and some of them are, they, just, they never run sales, you know, promotions. Others, they're forever in doing some sort of offer, promotion, incentive, different things to engage their audience because that's what they're, the sector they're in. That's what just is, is normal in that industry. And again, those offers, that sort of marketing calendar, that promotional calendar, that needs to be managed and executed in-house. Don't get me wrong, it's fed into the promotional, into the, the supporting agency, the partner agency, and equally the agency will feed back in ideas and suggestions. But the management and the rollout of a promotional calendar in terms of the offers and what, what you're going to run for Christmas and for Black Friday and for this and for that and all of these different things, that should be managed and often executed in terms of, because it's going to feed into the social media post, it's going to feed into the email marketing, it's going to feed into the product inventory, you know, it's going to feed into the copy on the post, it's going to feed in, even into the creative, it's going to feed into everything. And then of course, it also goes across into the marketing agency to reflect what we're running on paid, what we're doing from an organic standpoint, etc, etc, etc. But it should start from being in house and for the most part handled in house. And then the last one promotion. But what I mean by this is every brand you're going to have your black book of contacts, people that you know, that you work with, you know, media contacts, this, that and the other, your black book of contacts. So you should absolutely have that in house and you should be leveraging it for the good of the, of the brand, to promote the brand, to get features, to get acquire links, to, to really get yourself out there and to be top of mind for your potential customers. So absolutely be leveraging that. And again, you, we'll come onto it on the agency side, but an agency can support when it comes to promotion and PR and all of that good stuff. But don't underestimate or neglect your black book of contacts. And if you don't think you have a black book of contacts, just look a bit closer, ask your team, because I can pretty much guarantee you will have connections, you will have contacts, people you know in the industry, you know, different people, movers and shakers that you think, you know what, I could actually potentially leverage that if I just ask the question. As you're saying this, if you don't ask, you don't get. And we've seen, we've seen some unbelievable, I could tell some stories on this one in terms of how we've had clients sitting on some absolute gold in terms of contacts and connections but they just weren't leveraging. Oh, I've known so-and-so for 20 years. And he just happens to now run this huge media title or happens to be heavily connected with X or Y influence. And we're like, and have you approached them? Have you asked to you know, be included? It? No, I'm like, pick up, let's pick up the phone and let's make that happen. So, you know, make sure you just are mindful and leveraging your black book of contacts. So that's your in-house stuff, creative, your content, your product inventory, your email marketing, your social media management, your promotional calendar, and then your promotions in terms of your black book. What have I missed? Anything else to add to this? Would you agree, disagree? Let me know in the comments, I'd love to know, because now I'm gonna move on to what we would do and what we do agency side. Here we go, this is the really fun stuff. This is the stuff that we do. This is what we live and breathe by and I absolutely love it. So the first thing, strategy. The, the, you know, Typically brands will come to an agency such as Evergreen because 
they will want an overarching digital marketing strategy. You know, often they'll say, we want SEO, we want paid, or we want this, or we want that. And I will always sort of back that way and say, no, before we get into talking about the specifics, tell me what you really want in terms of how you want to grow the brand. What does success look like? Paint a picture for me three, five years from now. What does that look like? And then we'll get into the, to the nitty gritty. But a digital marketing strategy, what we would call a growth strategy, a digital growth strategy, what does success look like? That is the bit that should absolutely be sitting with the brand, with the agency, sorry. And then the agency will bring that brand, sort of put your, their arm around you and bring you along on the ride. And together you work out what does success look like? And crucially, how are you going to get there? So strategy, strategy, strategy is massively going to sit. The, the responsibility for that strategy should be sitting with the agency who then works with you on the brand side in-house to make sure that it's obviously ticking all the boxes and doing all the good stuff. And within strategy, you've got obviously, you know, the way Evergreen works is essentially we've got two sides of the same coin ultimately that feeds into the, the wider digital growth strategy. We've got the organic side and the paid side. The organic, your SEO, your content marketing, your promotion and your PR, your tech, to make sure that excluding the paid side, the organic side, are we visible? What reliance do we have on these different channels? What's working? What's not? Brand versus non-brand, all of that good stuff. Building a strategy, understanding where we've been, where we are and where we're going and how we're going to get there is the organic strategy. And then much the same, but on the paid side. So looking at Google ads, Bing ads, Meta ads, Amazon ads, LinkedIn ads, YouTube, all of the paid platform, the pay to play side of side of digital marketing and digital visibility. What are we doing? How are we going to do it? And what does that look like? And again, how does it align to the overarching digital growth strategy? So as we look five years from now, what are we thinking in terms of well, right now we're too reliant on paid or we, we're, we're only getting visibility for our brand traffic. And what does that look like? And what does it need to look like? And then we essentially, the way we literally work is we will have with, with our head of paid and our head of organic put their heads together and create one overarching digital strategy that aligns to the overall commercial goals of the brand. And then that is essentially worked with uh, alongside the brand, work, work with yourselves to then come up with and go, right, does this align to our overarching thing? Yes, great, right, we're off to the races. Make sense? So strategy, massive, absolutely massive. This is where an agency, if they're good, this is where an agency can really you know, make the difference in terms of your brand and your ability to massively scale. And it's something we absolutely love. And all my senior team, they just, the, the, the bit that they enjoy the most, the absolute most, strategy. The bit that I enjoy the most, strategy. It's just so great because you can be so creative. I love it. Next, SEO, I've called it SEO revisions, but essentially what I'm talking about is what needs to happen from an S to improve the SEO. Now, it might be we need to make some on-page revisions. It might mean we need to make do some some tweaks to the pages or products, or we need to improve this. You know, what hundred one different. They might need to change the navigation. Might need to improve the user experience. Might need to improve the checkout. All of that good stuff will happen. The, the SEO, the tech team that will typically sit within the agency will analyze the website. They'll look at you. They'll look at the competition, and they'll work out from an SEO. So if we look physically on the website, what needs to change. And then that, those recommendations, this will form recommendations, they will feed through into the uh, on you on the brand side in terms of either the developer or the person doing the admin or doing the product inventory to make those tweaks. So the SEO revisions will typically come from and sit with the agency side of things. Then you've got, and it's a couple of, uh, not too dis dissimilar to strategy, but you've got content strategy. That again is absolutely key. So a content strategy is what we're going to do. So within the organic side, we've said, right, well, we need to grow the organic side of the business. The content strategy is going to form a key pillar of how we're going to do that. What does that strategy look like? What does it need to include? What's it made up of? Over what timeline? What topics are we going to cover? What do we need to physically create? What do we need to produce? Who's going to do that? How are we going to do that? What's it going to look like? What's the end result? going to be. That as a strategy, it will sit with the agency. All of this sits very much with Evergreen. This is These are key characteristics of how exactly how we work for every one of our clients. So, so we do a, for every single brand we're working with, we define and build them a content marketing strategy that is aligned to their overall organic growth strategy, which is one half of their wider digital growth strategy. It makes sense. You've got your overarching digital growth strategy, your organic, your paid side, and under the organic, you've got your content marketing strategy. So lots of strategies upon strategies. This is what you've got to do to grow. Then within, within strategy, you've then got your content briefs. 
So you know how I said that we'll typically will sit, client side will be the writing of the content, the creation of the assets, but what they're creating and what they need to look like and how they're going to be formulated, that will often come from an agency. So we will tell the brand, this is what you need to produce. And obviously they have creative license, they have freedom, they can add their thoughts as well. But in terms of we're providing recommendations and ideas and suggestions based on research, based on what Google's liking, based on what's ranking, based on what the competitor's doing, based on what we can see is adding commercial value to other brands in the sector, in the industry. We're providing ideas and then the client is able to take them, interpret them and then make them, you know, whatever they end up producing. And then it comes back to us. We refine it, look at it, check it. Are we happy with it? Yes. Does it tick the boxes we need it to? And then we move on to the next. So providing the briefs, the sort of the, that's your overarching roadmap. And these are literally the building blocks of right, how the steps, how we're going to get there, right, piece by piece by piece. Content briefs, hugely important. And that for us takes in the form of content upgrades, content consolidations. We look at content cannibalization. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. But there's huge power from that. And our content team do a, do a really good job of uh, providing briefs. Next, the tech recs, so tech, technical recommendations. So again, when it comes to the website's actual performance, unless you are you know, a brand of a certain size, it's unlikely that you will have a full in-house tech team. You might, um, and some of our clients do. They have a whole team that either work in the UK or, or overseas. But the, the technical recommendations, the what needs to be fixed and how and why it needs to be fixed, that is often best coming from an agency. So an agency won't typically fix it, but what they will do is they will say, well, look, we've seen that there's a problem here, or you've got an error there, or this isn't working, or that could be improved, or this could be better. And then they'll provide recommendations on what they, why it needs to happen and what that will look like. And then it's over to the, the developer, de excuse me, over to the developers to uh, basically fix it and make it look and flow as we would all want it to. So the tech is hugely important. Most of the time will come from the agency. Next, we have the promotional campaigns. Now, if in-house you're leveraging your black book of contacts, what an agency will do is leverage databases. It will go, be able to do outreach and con make connections and build you connections with people you maybe don't know. So whether that's in the form of campaigns or outreach or, or different ideas, there's so many different ways to uh, approach it. And it's, you know, there's digital PR, you've got traditional outreach, you've got literally picking up the phone, you can be sending some cold emails, you can be reaching out on social media, leveraging influencers. There's so many different ways to build connections and to get to ultimately promote your brand. That is what you're gonna be paying an agency to do for you because unless you have a PR team in house, unless you have a team that is equipped and has all the access to all of the tools, all the databases, has the connections, has their own black book of contacts, it's going to be very, very time consuming, very, very difficult to do because it's there. You've got to come up with the ideas. You've got to be able to map them and work out what it, what they, you're going to pitch, how you're going to pitch it, what all of that good stuff. It's a, it's a whole video in its own right. All of these are, to be honest, but very, very um, important and very, very difficult. So we don't know. None of our clients are able to do this in their own right. They need us to do it and they rely heavily on us to run all of that for them. In the same way as number seven, the paid media campaigns. Now, again, a lot of the brands we work with, they've in some of them in the past have tried to do their own Google Ads management um, and it rarely works. They don't get the kind of return that they need. And so the, the paid media campaigns, which trickle down from the overarching strategy of what we're going to do and how we're going to do it, the paid media campaigns in terms of the day to day, week to week, month to month management, the optimization, the reporting, the refinement, the split testing, the trialing, the experimenting, that will sit with the agency. And then it's the agency's job to report into you as the client and be able to, what's working, what's not, had this idea, be very proactive, what about this, let's try this, all of that good stuff. So those are just literally seven things. I've tried to rattle through as fast as I can, there's a lot to cover in this one. But essentially the agency, the most value an agency can add to a brand is very strategic led, very commercially minded, strategy led, They'll do a lot of the, the what we need to do and why we need to do it and how we need to do it. They'll provide a lot of recommendations and they will do, when it comes to the technical stuff, they will hold your hand through the often wilderness of, well, what do we need to do? I don't understand it all. And they will do the hands-on proactive management and optimization of your paid media campaigns, your website optimization, your content production and strategy, your promotional campaigns and so on. So that's just a bit of a split. It by no means includes everything, but it's a good sense of 
seven things that typically we see our brands doing in-house and seven things that we typically see our agency, well, certainly these seven that we do, and we know a lot of other digital and marketing agencies that would do pretty much these seven things and then others beyond it. Let me know what you think in the comments just below, I'd really appreciate it. And beyond that, I will see you on the next one. All the best, take care.